man. So, boy, the internet is so damn diabolical, bro. They walked Joe Budden into the craziest trap, and I seen it coming from day one. From day one, when all this cover started about Diddy, and you seen that some people were quiet. When it came to Charlamagne God or Joe Budden or whomever, some folks were quiet because they like, damn, I've had my own set of allegations, so how can I hop out when it's just allegations at this point to speak on this man? So at that point, they were safe to just straddle the fence. But once the hard evidence came out that Cassie was indeed physically harmed by Diddy, these folks couldn't straddle the fence anymore. They had to make a point. And Charlamagne, cool that he doesn't have any DV allegations, but Joe Budden, on the other hand, he for sure got some shit in his background where well, folks, you know, <sighs> have said some things, several things. And what makes it even worse, they are front facing personalities like Tahiri, as you can see. So it's crazy the way things played out last week. Joe Budden released his podcast that featured timestamps where it said that he will be talking about the daily situation. That segment was only eight minutes long in the timestamp. So when the actual podcast released and the fans went to go ahead and listen to that portion of the podcast, it was a mess. The fans was pissed the fuck off. They like, damn, Joe, what's going on? They had a long Twitter space with them criticizing him for removing that point. And he expressed that the reason that he removed it because he wanted to give more time towards the topic. Yo, do you guys ever just think that everything is not this deep conspiracy that y'all want it to be? Like, we were dead in the middle of our broadcast yesterday. Come on, I'll put the suspense to bed. We were in the middle of our show when that news broke. So we spoke about it for four minutes, and then at the end, before Sleepers, we spoke about it for another four minutes, and then we went on about our day. And I went outside with Amani last night, and he said to me, hey, man, I think, I think y'all should readdress the puff shit because y'all gonna get killed and i said why the, the story was breaking we addressed it he said yeah but it wasn't the address it wasn't the address that is appropriate for what happened i said why you say that we did what we need to do he said yeah but the, i know your audience and it was breaking in the moment they wait from from y'all so i took it out i took it out because it was insensitive for the moment. It was it was talking for four minutes about what happened and in three minutes at the end is not the attention that the story needs and it ain't the commentary that it needs. So I don't need to be the first one to run to something. We're gonna get to it on Wednesday. Other folks like, nah, nigga, I don't think that's why you removed him. But nevertheless, his Wednesday podcast episode dropped and he did address everything again. Check it out right here. Here goes a rip from my boy, Chick Smooth. What's up, my boy? We're starting with uh, the news that CNN broke last week where they obtained hotel footage of Puff violently, graphically stalking and attacking Cassie. Uh, if that other angle come out, maybe kidnapping as well. But when it turned the corner, we don't get to, mm -hmm. we don't get to see. But you ran a long way down that hallway, and if you dragged her even four more feet, yeah, we now include kidnapping. That shit was disgusting. What we all had to witness. That shit was almost unbearable to watch. I'm certain that that was triggering for a lot of people, Absolutely. a lot of people that saw it. And that was Friday. I assumed that he would go and just hide somewhere. But why would you do that when you are just a glutton for attention? So he pops right back out. Talk about tone deaf. Talk about inability to read a room. Where are the fucking publicists? Where's anybody in this moment? But he pops back out with this half-hearted bullshit apology that was like, it's almost offensive. It was, a, it was, it was like a slap in the face, that apology. I didn't even watch it. I don't need to hear from him. I mean, I watched it because it was quick. It wasn't even, he didn't even try to put some sincerity mm -hmm. into this thing. Mm -hmm. That CNN Puff story broke as we were recording. Literally. Mm -hmm. And while we did touch on it, 
When I listened back, I didn't feel like enough time was devoted to just how much of a fucking lunatic that nigga looked like and what that means industry-wide uh -huh. for all parties involved. Um, I think this broadcast is too big and comes with a great responsibility in matters like this. And I know that a lot of the music industry listens to this podcast. And I don't think this is the last of it, nor do I think that he is the only one. So at any point, we want to start having some uncomfortable conversations. Not only am I down for it, but I'm down to initiate it. Because this shit is a mess mm -hmm, out here. Is. And he looks like a fucking nut. He looks like a complete... Monster. Just a complete evil mm -hmm. piece of shit. What I saw, what I saw on that video, as horrific as it was, lends a lot of credence to anything horrific I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's the uncomfortable spot. Well, it's all uncomfortable. Let me be clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But maybe he was unaware of some of the things that were out there about him. That real niggas is just running around saying, nah, shit sounds so crazy. When you hear about people blowing up cars, it sounds like some movie shit. Mm -hmm. I need, I need, I need footage. I need, I need something. When you start hearing about some of the other things we've heard about, I think that video allows for everything to be back on the table. Oh. Anything that you've ever heard now is just on the table. You lying sack of shit. You know and you tone up, and you tone deaf, and you so tone deaf, you on Instagram saying shit like time will tell the truth. And every You don't know when to shut the fuck up. All right, so once again, shout out to my boy Chig. So, hey, though, y'all heard what Joe had to say right there. From that point, the blogosphere, the shade room, Hollywood Unlocked, Neighborhood Talk, all the female blogs that follow the women that are fans or follow the women that Joe Budden have ran into in the past, they was on his ass. And that led to no other than to hear herself popping into the comment section of the shade room and speaking. Let's see what she had to say. She says, fuck out of here. Who? The irony. This is so triggering. I remember Joey throwing me down a flight of stairs. Wow. Dragging me back into the house and me having to talk him into letting me go for hours. This whole shit took me out so hard to watch. So sorry for Cassie and every other woman who was currently going through it or has ever gone through it. It's tough. And to hear he even hopped in the Hollywood Unlocked comment section saying, you can't be serious, boy. She, 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 ain't, she ain't letting up on him. Like I'm saying, more comments. Wait, was he not abusive towards women? I could have sworn he's had these allegations before. Joe, the man that beat Tahiri. Listen, Joe was not beating women the way Diddy was. Stop it. Oh, so Joe wasn't accused of being abusive to women. Oh, okay. Says the man that, man, the bro, they going in on the bro. They going in on the boy. Hold up, Joe Budden fighting back, man. Let's see what he got to say, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's pull it up. So Joe says to Harry, you are lying. Failed gold digger that has abused, targeted, and manipulated many men. Outside of me, you lack an identity, which is why you've tried desperately to attach yourself to me for over 15 years. The last time I saw you, I purchased the mattress from you, and you were happy you made the sale. You were fine then. There was that night after Starless six years ago when you invited me inside your new place. You were fine then too. You were on my body your entire last stand on Love and Hip Hop and tried your best to disrespect my son's mother in the process. I had to ask producers to keep you away from us like the cancer you are. Yet you continue to slight my name online because it's your identity. I don't speak to you or about you because it's low vibrational. You're a low level Dykeman con woman that's been lying about you. Already know for ages. I pray you heal and move on one day. Hopefully this is our last exchange. Prayers to all the real victims. So Joe says she lying. Joe is saying she lying and he feels okay to talk about what he want to talk about because it's lies. It's all lies. What y'all think about that, bro? What y'all think about that? They baited Joe into the situation. So now it's going to be up for public opinion to consume and say what they have to say about it. But, like, you know, with the Cassie situation, people are going to be reluctant. They're going to be kind of taking some pauses when it comes to alleged victims out there. They're gonna give him more credence because of what happened with the Cassie situation. But nevertheless, I'm gonna keep it G. This is the reason why someone like Joe Budden 
with his experience there, with him saying that he was lied on by this woman right here when it came to the DV shit. This is the reason why he would take his time before he goes out and destroy someone just based off allegations because he feels like he's been lied on himself. That's what he claims he's been lied on himself. So that's how these things gonna go with people like him or someone like Charlemagne or anyone that's in this industry that's a talking head, that's had these allegations on them before. They're gonna pump their brakes because they always feel like one day will be your day. But once you got some hard down evidence, what more can you say, man? But let me know what y'all gotta say about that in the comment section below. Joe Budden and this topic was either damned if you do, damned if you don't, because once people got an idea about you and they may not like you anyway, they're gonna just ignore all the other shit that said and just and just clamp on and focus on what they want to. So me, I have no dog in this fight. I don't know these people. It's one person's word versus the next. You are going to do what you want to do to make whatever narrative makes sense for you. So do with this information what you feel is necessary, all right? Let me know what y'all got to say in the comment section below. I'm going to get up out of here, though. This has been another update with Stace. Yo.